This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the laptops I would and wouldn't buy for January 2018. I did this once before, it's pretty popular. I think some of you found it helpful, so it's time for another one since technology has changed over. Let's get one caveat out of the way with consumer electronics, computers. I, it's never a great time, is it? Because something better is always going to come along. They do keep getting thinner, lighter, faster, all that sort of thing, prettier displays. It's the way the industry runs. Hopefully you're not caught in paralysis. I know that happens to some people forever waiting what's going to come next. And you're actually ready to buy a laptop or within the next three to six months you try and decide. First up, Ultrabooks. You know those 13.3 inch or 14 inch, sometimes even 15 inch thin and lights that have those 15 watt U series CPUs from Intel. This is a great time to buy them because they just got refreshed several months ago with Intel 8th generation CPUs. It's a pretty recent refresh, so nothing's going to be coming right away there. So you're going to get the latest and you're going to get the greatest. And at first we saw consumer laptops like the Lenovo Yoga 920 get refreshed, the Dell XPS 13, and now we're even seeing business models being refreshed too, the Dell Latitudes, the Lenovo ThinkPads, all that sort of thing. Asus, who's been a little bit slow, is starting to do that with the ZenBook Flip and the ZenBook 13, which is the new name for the UX330 family of products. So it's a good time to buy those. They're going to be current for several, many more months to come. Next up, gaming laptops. It's a pretty good time to buy. Intel still has not released the Intel 8th generation H series CPUs yet. The only one they have come out with, with is the interesting one where you get an Intel CPU and an AMD GPU together. Not too many announced, but at CES so far we saw an HP Spectre X360 15 inch announced that will have that. And the Dell XPS 15 2 in 1, a new model from Dell that's going to have that. So, other than that variation, we're still waiting to see what should be six core instead of four core 45 watt CPUs. It could be several months down the road. Given the fact that gaming laptops, if you are using them for gaming, usually are more dependent on the power of the GPU, the graphics card, than the CPU, and the CPUs are pretty powerful in the existing quad core 45 watt lineup, it's a pretty good time to buy. They've been out for several months, so the prices are coming down. You might find a good deal. I wouldn't worry about buying one now. It's, it's a fine time. When it comes to NVIDIA and the GPUs, we all know now that the current 10, 10 series Pascal GPUs which are, were a huge leap in performance. And that was a while ago. Usually about every three generations, NVIDIA goes to a big leap in performance. So I'm not expecting the next gen Volta, it's going to be called, coming out sometime later this year on the mobile side to be a huge, huge improvement. You never know. NVIDIA could surprise us. They have some real bright people there. But still, it's an okay time, you know, to, to do it. It's not like with the Ultrabooks where, yeah, go ahead right now. But it's an okay time. And like I said, pricing is good. Next up, there's something that's not on the market. And it's the new always connected tablets, mostly. Like the Lenovo Mix, you know, they have floppy det detachable keyboards, that, that kind of product. Well, we're finally going to see one with Qualcomm Snapdragon 8, you know, you get the idea, the, the mobile CPUs inside instead, Snapdragon 845. So you got the brains of a phone, and granted, phone brains are pretty darn smart these days. Inside, anything up to like a 13.3 inch tablet or so, the pricing is not going to be super cheap. A lot of those look to be anywhere from $700 to $1,000, but the selling point with those is that you're going to have pretty long battery life. You know, we've seen actually... Uh, Microsoft tried this before with the Surface non-pro line, putting mobile CPUs in there, and it didn't work out so well. It might work out better, and battery life really might be better, but you will have so-called always connected LTE connectivity built in there. So if that's something you're interested in, it could be worth the wait. Performance obviously is not going to be up there with... Uh, you know, the usual laptop CPUs that are out there, or GPUs for that matter, but for everyday productivity, they're probably going to be fine. They're going to be out sometime later this quarter, so can't really say much more about them yet. Really going to have to test them to find out if they're worth it. But one thing is it's going to come with Windows 10 S, not regular Windows. That's the one that only runs UWP apps. That means App Store apps, so you can't install full Adobe CC suite on it, that sort of thing. So if that matters to you, that's important. Now, you can always upgrade a Windows 10 S license to the regular full Windows 10 Home or Pro if you want, but the challenge is that you're not working with Intel architecture, and it's really hard to say whether existing desktop apps that aren't from the App Store will actually work. 
When it comes to mobile workstations, you know, the Dell Precision line, those sort of things, the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad P series, those bigger machines are essentially gaming laptops, but with NVIDIA Quadro graphics, pretty much the same thing it goes as with the gaming laptops. I don't expect to see huge, huge changes, but mostly you don't buy those for yourselves anyway. Your company usually buys those for you, the CAD workstations, the 3D rendering workstations. So again, it's an okay time to buy. Lastly, there's Mac. There's the MacBook Pros and the regular MacBook non-pro models. And always with Apple, it's a little hard to say. And they, they paint themselves into something of a, a corner because they typically use, at least for the 13-inch MacBook Pro, a less common CPU, the 28-watt CPU in the ultra bookie family rather than the 15 watts. So right now with the non-touch bar MacBook Pro, you have your usual 15 watt CPU. They're still back in dual core land. They haven't moved up to eighth generation yet. And there is no 28 watt KB Lake R, this new double core kind of thing. So what's Apple going to do? It's really hard to say. Is Intel going to come out with that 28 watt part? We don't know. So right now, if they updated, say, the, the non-touch bar Mac, the one that has the regular U-series CPUs, that would move it up to four cores. It would probably be faster than the more expensive 13-inch MacBook Pro. So you can see why they're going to have to wait or make a decision just to go with those 15 watt CPUs. Don't know what they're going to do. Apple's mysterious. At least they're back to updating the MacBook Pros with some frequency when it comes to CPU generations and all that sort of thing. So hopefully, it won't take them too long unless they really are holding out for that part. With the 15-inch MacBook Pro, it gets interesting because a perfect fit would be that combination of the Intel CPU with that AMD GPU like we saw again on the HP Spectre X360 15-inch new high-end model and that XPS 15 2-in-1 because they are already using AMD GPUs at Apple. That's the thing they like to do lately. So there they've got a pairing and it looks like the performance of that should be somewhere around the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, which for a 15 inch MacBook Pro would be probably a good place to be. They really don't go for overpowering GPU performance there since they went for that super thin and like redesigned back in 2016 which I don't see changing real fast. I know Johnny Ive said, oh, we heard you and your complaints out there, folks, and I'm back at designing, but it's going to take a while before they come up with anything. And goodness knows, I might have a heart attack if they actually decide to make a thicker laptop because you know how Apple rolls. But it could happen. Now with that 12-inch MacBook, again, there is no KB Lake R 8th generation for that Intel Y series, even lower power CPU, out yet. So they're probably not going to refresh it until something happens there. It's, so it's probably an okay time to buy. If I was going to buy a MacBook Pro, though, I would, and you can wait, I would probably wait three to six months to see what Apple does with 8th generation CPUs because the performance jump between 7th and 8th generation is significant for the, the ultra booky kind of setup and that new... GPU configuration if they choose to use it could be interesting. Lastly, there's the new AMD Ryzen laptops, which so far have hardly materialized, right? I know a lot of you enthusiasts were really excited. You thought this is the time AMD is really going to beat the pants off of Intel and be faster and finally know how to manage thermals and battery life and all that sort of thing. Well, as it turns out, not many laptops still have it. Asus made a rogue Strix with with the, the new Ryzen platform in it, and it had thermal problems and the battery life wasn't so great on it. Granted, that was one of the more powerful configurations there. HP has an Envy that has it in there, and it's the drivers right now, AMD is not so great at graphics drivers the way NVIDIA is right now, unfortunately. It's not quite as stable, and the performance is, is okay. It's, a, you know, it's... It's like Intel, but with an NVIDIA MX150 GPU inside, a low-end dedicated GPU. So that's kind of a nice thing. And we'll see where it goes. Maybe there will be more models that hit the market and they will get some of the kinks out. But I would hold off right now until they can actually prove to us that they can get those things working really smoothly without thermal issues, with decent battery life, with drivers that are good. So there you have it. Yes, on Ultrabooks. Okay, yeah, on gaming laptops and workstations. I would wait for the Mac, definitely three to six months and see. Hopefully, they won't take longer than that. With the always connected uh, new Snapdragon mobile OS products, we're really going to have to wait until I get those in for review so I can tell you how worthwhile they are, especially because they're not going to be cheap. And lastly, AMD Ryzen, I say that that's a hold right now until we see more models out there. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.